welcome students welcome to the third lecture of engineering mechanics and in this part we are going to discuss about the third part of module 1 so in the previous lesson we have discussed about some of the basic principles and uh, principles of engineering mechanics and we have discussed about newton's third law of uh, first second and third law of motion and newton's law of gravity and parallelogram and triangle laws of uh, forces so today we are going to discuss about some more principles in engineering mechanics the first one is principle of transmissibility of forces principle of transmissibility of forces so according to this principle the condition of equilibrium or motion of a rigid body will remain unchanged if the point of application of a force acting on the rigid body is transferred to any other point along its line of action that means uh, let us consider a small body in this body we are applying a force f at a point a let a b be the line of action of this force or f is force f is acting along this line consider another body and uh, consider the same body here uh, and we are applying the same force with the magnitude f at a point p on the body and the line of action remains unchanged so according to principle of transmissibility of forces the conditions of equilibrium of this body remain unchanged if the force f is acting any point on this line of action without changing its magnitude or both these, both these cases uh, made the same effect on this body or the equilibrium of this body does not change if the point of application of the force have acting um, through the same line of action at A or B okay so a force F is acting on a body at a point A is transferred to point B along the same line same same line of action without changing its net effect on the rigid body so that is principle of transmissibility of forces said that okay so the principle of transmissibility of force is again defined as the principle of transmissibility state that the condition of equilibrium or the motion of a rigid body will remain unchanged if a force f acting at a given point a on the rigid body is replaced by a force f dash of the same magnitude and the same direction but acting at a different point b provided that the two forces have the same line of action that means let us consider a body here and we are applying a force a here with the magnitude f with the direction in this direction and the line of action okay and and another and the same uh, same body we are applying we are replacing this force with another force m dash and applying at a point b on the same line of action and both will both will result the same uh, condition or the condition will again uh, remains unchanged if we apply force f4 f dash of the same magnitude at a point a or b on the same body okay this is known as principle of transmissibility of forces this is a very important criteria in the equilibrium condition of a body okay and another important conditions are an important points to be noted in the study of engineering mechanics are the resultant the equilibrium and resolution of forces okay the composition and resolution of forces and uh, resultant equilibrium and resolution of forces so what is a resultant of a force or resultant of a uh, set number of forces if the combined effect of several forces let f1 f2 f3 etc are acting on a body and the combined effect of the or effect of these forces 
acting on a rigid body is the same as that of a single force we are replacing uh, this uh, f1 f2 f3 with a single force r then this r is called the resultant force of f1 f2 f3 etc that is if the combined effect of several forces f1 f2 f3 etc acting on the rigid body is same as that of a single force r then r is called the resultant force of f1 f2 f3 okay if a number of forces are replaced with a single force and with the same uh, effect on the body then that result that is known as a resultant of a force and a force equal and opposite to the resultant force is known as equilibrant of that force a force which is equal and opposite to that of resultant force is known as equilibrant of uh, that of force of that resultant force okay and the replacement of single force by several components which will be equal and in action to the given force is called resolution of forces if a single force f is acting on a body and we are dividing that to force to several component ago about several axes and those components of the same force is known as re uh, resolution of forces okay or replacing a single force into several component is known as uh, resolution of forces okay and and uh, that and the uh, and in the contradictory and that uh, combining several force to single force that is known as a resultant of force that is known as composition of forces okay resultant uh, resolution means uh, the replacement of single force into several components that is known as resolution of forces so if a body is subjected to a number of forces and the resultant force is zero or if a body subjected to several force and we are taking the resultant and we will get the resultant as zero then the body is at rest and is said to be in equilibrium then the body is said to be in equilibrium okay so these are the main, main points uh, to be noted resultant of resultant of a force equilibrium of a force and resolution of forces we are going to dealing these things uh, elaborately in other chapters okay next one law of superposition of forces so law of superposition of forces according to superposition of forces law of superposition of forces the action of a given system of forces on a rigid body will no way be changed if we add or subtract from them another system of force in equilibrium so generally if a system is in equilibrium and we are adding or subtracting in that system with another system of force in equilibrium then there is uh, then uh, there is no change in the equilibrium that will provide that will produce any uh, no, no change in the equilibrium of that body that means the action of a given system of forces on a rigid body will no way be changed if we add or subtract from them another system of force in equilibrium or Uh, consider that a body is a body is in equilibrium with a set of forces and we are replacing a set of forces which are in equilibrium from that body so this will not affect the equilibrium condition of that body that is known as law of superposition of forces this force uh, this uh, superposition principle is very important uh, and we are dealing with uh, we are studying this in the later chapters and units there are several fundamental units that we are using in the study of engineering mechanics and the main units are mass length time and force and these are represented by kilogram units are kilogram for mass meter per length second for time and newton for force okay and small letter i send kg for kilogram and small letter m for meter and small letter s for second and capital letter n for newton okay and these are the 
quantity dimensional symbol capital letter m l t and f okay and here kilogram meter second are known as basic units basic units okay and we all we also know that force is equal to mass into acceleration and that is why newton is equal to kilogram into meter per second square and also weight is equal to mass into gravity mass into acceleration due to gravity so weights unit is newton which is equal to kilogram meter per second square or one unit is the force required to give a mass of one kilogram at an acceleration of one meter per second okay these are the these things you know already studied in the in your school cases classes okay so scalars and vectors so what are scalars and what are vectors we are going to study the vector quantities uh, in details in, in our chapters okay so what is a scalar a scalar which has only magnitude and there is no direct direction associated with it and a vector with a magnitude and a direction okay those are known as vectors so scalars have only magnitude as is associated and the examples are time volume density speed and vector possess a direction as well as magnitude and must obey the parallelogram law of addition and the triangular law of addition, uh, law, uh, addition of vectors examples are displacement uh, velocity acceleration force moment momentum etc here speed is a uh, scalar quantity and velocity is a vector quantity and equivalent vector can be calculated by uh, if there are two vectors p1 and v2 then equivalent vector can be calculated by using uh, parallelogram law or triangular laws okay by using vector sum speed is a magnitude of velocity and another important criteria is that another important uh, term is the force so we have already studied the force in the in your school classes and force has a magnitude as well as direction so in this uh, engineering mechanics we are, we have to study the magnitude and direction aspects of forces okay so according to newton's first law force is defined as an action which changes or tends to change the state of rest of uniform motion of a body in a straight line or uh, according to that law force is defined as an action which changes or tends to change the state of rest of, of a uniform motion of a body in a straight line this is uh, by in newton's first law of motion if we uh, apply a force on a body uh, which is at rest and the body will start moving okay and that is known as force that is that is known as force acting on a body so I already stated that force has a magnitude which is p and a direction which is through this direction and a point of application here a is the point of application so in uh, our mechanics study the main term main thing we have to understand is that we have to find out the if we uh, have a force we have to find out the point of application of that force and direction then only we can uh, do the problems in uh, mechanics okay so for a body when force is acting on a body we have to find out the point of application and the direction of that force okay that is an important one so we will study this in details on the next next classes okay so classification of forces there are several forces a force acting on a body can be classified according to Coplanar force system and non coplanar force system. So, coplanar force system is that all the forces acting on a body are on a single plane, are acting on a single plane. And non coplanar means all the forces acting on a body are not on a single plane. There are several planes associated with each, each forces. 
okay so these are the uh, main cases copy and force system means the two dimensional force system and the triple and copy and force system means is the three dimensional mainly three dimensional force system and the copy and force system are classified as concurrent or non concurrent forces <laughs> collinear or non collinear forces parallel or non parallel forces and like or unlike parallel forces so these are the main classification of coplanar forces and non coplanar also classified according to concurrent collinear parallel and unlike parallel etc okay so what is a coplanar forces in a coplanar forces all the forces are lie in a single plane and is called as coplanar forces here this is a coplanar concurrent forces concurrent force means all the force acting on a body meets at a single point and that types of force are known as concurrent forces coplanar concurrent means all the force acting on a single plane and which meets at a particular point that is known as coplanar concurrent forces and coplanar concurrent force a non concurrent force means all the force acting on a single plane and they are not meeting at a single point and coplanar collinear phase uh, collinear forces means both the forces are collinear or on the same line and which is acting at a same plane okay and coplanar non collinear means uh, both the forces are acting on a single plane and which are not collinear or not linear with each other and next term is coplanar parallel forces all the forces are parallel to each other and which are acting at same plane and like parallel and unlike parallel forces if all the forces are not on the same direction acting on the same direction then it is known as coplanar unlike parallel forces and if the forces acting on a plane are parallel and which are acting on the same direction those those are known as coplanar like parallel forces and similar to that there is a non coplanar forces in which all the forces are not acting at a single plane so when all the forces acting on a body which are not lie on the same plane and such forces are known as non coplanar forces so non coplanar forces are classified as non coplanar par parallel forces all the forces are parallel and in that there are like parallel and unlike parallel forces and also non coplanar not kind uh, of coplanar concurrent forces all the forces meet at a single point and which are not acting on a single plane and there are Uh, non-coplanar, non-concurrent forces, in which all the forces uh, acting uh, not acting on a single plane, and they are not concurrent forces. Okay, so these are the main terms you have to study in this uh, lecture, and those are you have to study the uh, transmissibility of uh, forces, superposition principle, and Uh, resultant equilibrium etc okay so take a note from these lectures and uh, and we can we can study more about this in the later chapters so thank you